Flights are now 15 minutes and 35 seconds into the third mission of Columbia, the space shuttle. And there has been one event that was not planned for, the securing or shutting down earlier than planned of one of the three APUs on board the uh, Columbia. So we want to go now to uh, Mission Control in Houston and Steve Bell, who has with him Dr. Shannon Lucid, who is an astronaut, and perhaps we can learn more about this uh, problem, if it is in fact a problem. Steve? Thank you, Frank. Good morning, everyone. Dr. Lucid, what's going on here in Houston now? How do they, where do they get data and what do they do with it? Well, right now, they're getting all the data that came down. They're analyzing the data. You heard that the APU temperatures were just a little right. high, so they turned them off. They're looking at the data to find out if there is a problem. That'll be the first thing that they'll uh, uh, determine. This is a case where I understand that the mission controllers here are actually probably on the phone with people all over the country who are part of the expertise on this subject. Well, they don't even need to get on the phone. They have the experts sitting right back there in the back room, and so they'll be talking to them and analyzing the data and finding out what to do. All right, this is, this is not a new problem uh, on the shuttle, and it, was it, in effect, what forced them to shorten the mission the last time? Well, all we know right now is that the temperatures were just a little hot. We don't even know that there is a problem or that there was a problem. So the temperatures were a little high, and they'll want to analyze and find out why the temperatures were a little higher than they expected. Is this the kind of situation where they may be using the mock-up and the uh, simulator here to simulate the conditions there and test possibilities? Uh, not yet. Uh -huh. Right now, they'll just be looking at the data and finding out if they do need to do anything else. Okay, we're coming into a period, or we're in a period now, where we can't hear the astronauts until they come up over the, Ma the Madrid station. Uh, what kinds of things are they going to be talking about and asking about information exchange when we get their signal back? Well, when they get there, they'll be talking about what has gone on in the meantime. If they have any uh, caution and warnings that have come up, they'll be discussing that. And they'll be discussing the second Ohm's burn. They have to do another Ohm's burn here real shortly. Now, the second Ohm's burn is the one that will put it into the precise circular orbit. Right. Right now, they're sort of in an egg-shaped orbit, mm -hmm. and they have to get the other side up, so it'll be uh, 130 miles circular. All right, we were uh, talking earlier that we have as the next big thing that has to happen, the yeah. uh, opening of the cargo bay doors once we've had this second Ohm's burn. Uh, we've got a model here. Uh, first of all, they have to open, don't they? Right. They've got to get the doors open. They'll have to open them up like this. And if the doors, for some reason, do not open, then they have to return back to Earth because the doors have to be open so that the heat that is generated by all the equipment inside the orbiter can be dissipated into space. That's literally, they have to be able to let the heat off or... Yeah, if they don't get the heat off, then all the equipment just sort of cooks. And they'd have to and that doesn't come work back too down well in then. a hurry. Right. Uh, we think now we're getting some sound from the Madrid station in touch with the astronauts. Let's listen in. This is shuttle control Houston. 18 minutes, uh, 35 seconds, mission elapsed time. Standing by now for reacquisition of signal with uh, Columbia through Madrid. Correction on that. We're still waiting for the signal to come back as we, we now see have the acquisition mission signal control, with and there's Madrid. the acquisition. Flight Director no, Tommy uh, Holloway. Houston, we're AOS Madrid. Configure AOS. Okay, we're here in Madrid. Okay, Houston, we got a good bird with on time. We're in a uh, 131 by 46, as you can see, and I'll give you a couple check. Roger, sounds good, and uh, we're ready for the gimbal check. So we have the astronauts clearly back in communication and continuing with routine duties, uh, although we still have this one problem with one of the three APUs that has been shut down because it was showing high temperatures. That does not mean it will not be able to be started back up again. Right. And our coverage of the space shuttle Columbia, or Columbia will continue in just a moment. The Space Shuttle Columbia, the first spacecraft ever designed for more than one mission into Earth orbit. In years to come, this magnificent ship will be the common carrier providing routine access to the vast ocean that is space. On board as before, Tang Instant Breakfast Drink with its delicious orange taste and a full day's supply of vitamin C in every glass. Great tasting Tang for spacemen and Earth families.
This is Frank Reynolds along with Gene Cernan at the Kennedy Space Center here at Cape Canaveral. We're 22 minutes and 7 seconds into the third mission of Columbia, the space shuttle. And uh, right at the moment, the uh, astronauts and the shuttle are over uh, Africa. They've already crossed the Atlantic. Doesn't take very long in one of these uh, machines. But, uh, Gene, I think we had better uh, talk a bit more here about this one problem now that has occurred, or perhaps I don't know whether it really is a problem. Uh, one of the three APUs has been secured early, shut down earlier than planned. Now, tell us exactly what, what does this auxiliary power unit do in terms of uh, the success or failure of the mission? Well, let's call it an anomaly. It's not a problem yet. We had a slightly high temperature. They shut it down, I think, as a precautionary measure. The, uh, the auxiliary power units, APUs as they're called, there's three of them. Uh, you could certainly come back with two uh, without any problem. But they provide hydraulic pressure to, when we saw those engines gimbal on the rocket booster, that's what steers it as it goes up into orbit. They need them for that purpose, and then they don't use them again until they come back in yes, to the Earth, into the Earth's atmosphere, and they, uh, they use them to control the airplane-like surfaces, the elevators and the elevons yes. on the spacecraft. Well, they are vital, then. Well, they're, they're very, very yes. vital, but I believe we're probably more concerned about them down here than the crew is up there. Right now, they're concerned about getting a second ohms burn, getting into a good orbit. They can live with this problem for one hour, one day, five days. I think it's an analysis, a management-type analysis as to whether or not we have confidence that it's not a generic yes. problem. Will it occur in the other APUs? Yes, Gene, we hear now from uh, Mission Control in Houston that they have a temperature reading that indicates that it's cooling down. I think uh, this is a very good sign. It, wouldn't that be natural, though, uh, after they shut it down? Well, and that also says if it cools down when you need it again in seven days, uh, let it heat up while you're using it. You're only That's using it. it for 15 yeah. minutes. Well, obviously, there doesn't seem to be very much concern, certainly not uh, on the part of the astronauts. Won't be They're not concerned at all. I think I can, uh, I can sit in their place right now. They just want to get up there and do the job. And as I say, this is a problem that they can live with and shove off a day or two. Well, they're well on their way. Uh, as we've heard, the uh, astronauts are not uh, really the uh, only living creatures on board Columbia. Uh, caterpillar moths and uh, honeybees will be along. And we have a report on the bugs and bees from Lynn Scherr. But one of the experiments ride on this platform or pallet back here in the cargo bay. This box-like chamber is the thermal canister experiment, TCE, that will house delicate instruments on future missions, shielding them from extreme heat or cold. And it is covered with a lid of foil that will record any space dust or micrometeorites the Columbia might encounter. This is SUSIM, solar ultraviolet spectral irradiance monitor. Looking like a jigsaw puzzle piece, we'll measure the sun's ultraviolet rays. This is VCAP, Vehicle Charging and Potential Experiment, VCAP. And it will emit an electron beam so scientists can see how it interacts with the Earth's magnetic field and with the shuttle's wake as it passes through the ionosphere. The only experiment that will be moved from this pallet is this one. Now, this probe on top will be grappled by the mechanical arm, and the cylinder will be lifted out of the spacecraft so that it can measure the environment surrounding the orbiter. Now, the tricky part for astronaut Gordon Fullerton will be to maneuver the cylinder back into place and secure it in this crowded part of the cargo bay. I'm sorry that uh, that was a report by Lynn Scher on uh, the various experiments that will be conducted on board the, the shuttle, but uh, that did not include a mention of the bugs and the bees, uh, the caterpillar moths and the honey bees that uh, will be observed flying in near zero gravity as a result of a project dreamed up by an 18-year-old high school senior, Todd Nelson, from Rose Creek, Minnesota. So we'll hear no doubt more about that as uh, the mission proceeds. Well, we are 26 minutes and five seconds into the third mission of Columbia, the space shuttle. All seems to be going well, as we have reported. There is one malfunction slightly. Perhaps we shouldn't call it a problem. Uh, the shutting down of one of the three APUs, the auxiliary power units, but that does not seem to be impeding the progress of the mission as of right now. We'll uh, keep you informed, of course, of uh, what transpires during this mission, and we'll have a complete report on today's launch on ABC's World News tonight. My thanks to Gene Cernan and to Jules Bergman, to uh, Steve Bell in Houston, to Ken Kashiwahara at White Sands, and to Lynn Scher here at the Kennedy Space Center. This is Frank Reynolds. Good morning for now.